To me, thinking about ethics, uh, it starts on a personal level, on an individual level. What do I value? What do I believe in? What can I do to create a more attractive future for myself uh, and the people around me? Do I dare to take a stand in this dangerous world? And do I truly believe in what I'm doing? Um, and in the, in the 90s of the previous century, I asked myself that same question. Do I believe in what I'm doing? At the time, I was a TV director um, in the Netherlands. I was on, the, on that blue curve that Pat was talking about uh, this morning. Um, and I always felt, there was always this little voice in the back of my mind that said, you're not doing this very passionately. At the same time, though, I also didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, but there was this unconscious feeling that I was not in the right place. And I was always jealous of people that had their dreams and that were following their dreams and were talking about that passionately. And to me, it felt like they all um, had their personal uh, Apollo programs. Just like in the 60s when President John F. Kennedy said to his nation, we're going to put a man on the moon and bring him back home safely, and we're going to do it in this decade. And he made that comment only 20 days after the first American was able to be in space for 15 minutes. Uh, so shooting for the moon seemed almost impossible. But yet, um, before the decade was over, we all know the story, uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, of course, walked on the surface of the moon and returned home safely. And that story has always well, inspired me or fascinated me, because I wondered, how did they do that? And I wondered about these people that have their dreams and follow their dreams. How are they making their dreams come true? Is there a recipe for that? Is there a method to be developed so that I and the people around me can also have their dreams come true? So I spent the next, uh, or the last actually, the last 10, 15 years developing that method uh, together with a very close friend of mine. And we call it scenario-based reasoning. During the course of that development and research that we did in developing this, I did find my passion back. And that passion is to help organizations determine where they want to be in the future and then reason their way back to today so that they can start building and crafting that uh, future state. Um, and let me be very clear on when I say um, uh, the future. Uh, I don't think that anyone can predict the future. That's simply impossible. Still, I am going to share the, 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 la the next oh, 15 minutes um, to show you how we have developed that approach and what you can do as well to determine where you want to go, where you want to be, and how to get there. Um, it's impossible to predict the future simply because the world that we're living in has become so complex. So the amount of possibilities that we can end up with is countless, and it's become impossible. In fact, we're living in a world of wicked problems. Um, the problems that we face from climate change, uh, the healthcare system, the educational system, even terrorism, the financial crisis, they have so many stakeholders involved, and there are so many feedback loops there that it seems impossible, and it becomes impossible uh, to solve them. They are wicked. Not in the sense that they are evil, but they're wicked because they resist resolution. Um, so what do you do in a world where these wicked problems cannot be solved? Um, you have to be able to deal with the volatility, the uncertainty, and the complexity, even the ambiguity of that world. And um, in that world that is so complex, I don't believe that you can draw a straight line from the past into the future, extrapolate from that, and yet, we do that quite often. This is almost, if you believe in straight lines like these, that is almost saying that you don't believe in change, that it will just continue the way it does today. And what you're actually saying is that you're doing things the way you're doing them because you did them that way and you've always done them that way. And it sounds ridiculous when I say that, but when you listen around, you hear that quite often. When companies say, last year we had our business grow for 5%, and so next year we're going to grow for 5% again. Or when trend watchers are observing what's hot this year so that they can make predictions about what's going to be fashionable next year. Or when couples stay married just because they've been together so long. And on the surface, there might not be anything wrong with that, but I think that it blinds you for the unexpectedness of the world that we're also living in. 
Because what happens if the future unfolds like this? There's no way to find that line, to extrapolate that line and draw it further into the future. If the future unfolds like this, you have to find where the trend breaks. Where are the twists and turns? Where does the road bend? And it's very difficult to find those breakpoints, of course. But it requires you to ask different kinds of questions. What is needed for Facebook to fail? What would trigger us all to stop driving a car? When will we all realize that we have to stop wasting our energy? What do we need to do to stop making a phone call or using our smartphones? It's new questions that require new answers. And how you find those answers is quite a difficult task. Actually, the only way to find them is by looking back. We can look back now and see when, Faye, when Mark Zuckerberg was on his student flat, started developing the Facebook, as it was still then called, and how he turned that into a success. But if you're there at that time, it is very difficult to see and to feel these weak signals. It's like the weak signals that I had back in the 90s, when I felt, well, I'm not doing something right here, but I don't know what it is. So you might be feeling something, but to recognize them and to act upon them, that's quite something different. Um, another example, and that, that is because why don't you recognize them? It's because you're seeing the world through glasses that have been created in the past, and you need new glasses to see it. Uh, another example of that, um, I always uh, use a graph like this to illustrate. I had a lot more to say there, I see. Um, but this remark I think I want to come back to, because in hindsight, everything is clear. In hindsight, everything seems obvious and every, everything seems reasonable on how and when you had to react to something. So in the time when we were living in a world that everybody believed that was flat, there were already people that said the Earth was not flat. The Greek astronomer said it was a ball already. But if you're surrounded by people that say, no, the Earth is flat, um, and you just don't hear these signals, you cannot find them. Of course, today, we all know that the Earth is round, right? Or at least most of us know that the Earth is round. Um, and that is because we have that proof. We've all seen that picture of the rising Earth from the moon that the crew of the Apollo 8 took. They gave us like new glasses to see our world, and we can now see where those astronomers were right. So if it's only possible to find these breaking points, to find these turns and twists in the roads um, by looking back, then how do you do that if you want to create your own future? Is it possible to step into the future, turn around, look back, and then see what that road looked like? Just like when you travel on a mountain and you reach the end of that and you're on the vista point, you look back and you see all the twists and turns of that road. Is it possible to create something like that? And if that would be possible, would we then be able to find those weak signals? And would we then be able to act on them? Would we be able to use them to create our future and to create our world? I think that by looking from that new paradigm through new glasses, we will be able to find these weak signals and use them to craft our future. Now, if maybe, you know, we've, we've been hearing all these talk today about the technologies that we have, um, and that go out there and that make everything possible. And perhaps, well, you think that's far-fetched and that's science fiction. That is never going to happen. Or well, what do I do with that? Well, let's imagine it is possible. You know, we're already pushing the boundaries of what we can and cannot do with technology. I'd say that everything is created and we're using technology all around us. Everything was made by someone. The chairs you're sitting in, the bed you slept in last night, the phone that's in your pocket, how you traveled here, we've all created that with the technology that's being developed in labs around the world. Civilization, I think, is one of our biggest inventions, the good and the bad side of that. And what's going to happen if we push that even further? If we're not only creating the things outside of our bodies, but also the things that are inside of us? What if we are going to be able to create life itself? Then we end up in a world where everything is possible. And then we end up in a world, if we have these tools, that we can create our own future hindsights. Um, so the world around us is specifically made for each and every one of you, and it is about finding those technologies and use them to your benefit. Um, 
what does the world look like that you want to be living in? How do you get there? Well, I'd say that the only thing that you need for it is an idea. You need an idea, and everybody is able to formulate his or her own vision on the future. You've been listening this entire day here to all these great ideas that were worth spreading. Now you have to trust yourself that these ideas are seeds planted in your brain, and it's up to you to do something with that. It's up to you what happens next. Everybody can do that. You just have to take the time to do it. Just imagine what your vision of, let's say, 2025 looks like. What does that world look like? I think that you know, by sharing these ideas on the future and by talking about that and by reasoning about how we could possibly get from that future position to today, we can create the future. Uh, and my idea about the future is just as valuable as your ideas on the future. So let's take our time together and imagine what the future will look like. Take just the next 20 seconds to think about that. What is your image of the future? What does 2025 look like to you? So I'm willing to share my stage for the next 20 seconds with all of you to come up with that idea. Just think about that. What do you want the world to be? And right now, it might seem impossible, that future scenario that you've created, but it is thinking impossibilities that will get us to create the world. I like this quote from Robert F. Kennedy, when he says, some people see things the way they are and ask why. I dream things that never were and ask why not. If anything is possible with these technologies, we can create the future. So think back about that future image you created just a couple of minutes ago. Place yourself in that world. Really put yourself in that new paradigm. Get the new glasses of that paradigm. And then turn around. And try to see what all the bends in the roads have been. And the only way to find out what all those breaking points have been is if you start talking about that. I'm not saying that we should keep on dreaming about the future and keep it for ourselves. I'm saying that we should share what our reasoning behind those future scenarios is, so that we can find the path forward. And if you reason about that future, and if you identify where those breaking points are, be sure to mark them along the way, just like the breadcrumbs that you leave behind on a trail, so that one day when you find one of those breadcrumbs back, you know you're on that path towards that future. That is how it's built, and that's how it's created. Um, I'm just as uncertain about where we are today as everyone is that is in this room. But I believe that by this way, you can start imagining and creating that future. I find myself now doing what I like uh, because of this. In fact, that's the way I met Nicoletta when we were crafting scenarios for the future of the European Broadcasting Union. That's also how I ran into a guy, a 20-year-old guy named Fakri in New York. He was a foster kid. Um, he was sold by his mom. He was a Moroccan by origin when he was five years old, all across the world, and ended up in New York. And we were doing a session there on foster care. And what could we do for foster care kids that age out of that system in New York, which happens when you turn 18, um, and that happens to about 30,000 kids each year, and 50% of those kids end up on the street, homeless, on drugs, crime, anything like that. What could we do as a group of 30 people that were together in that session in New York to help Factory's dream become true? And he said what he wanted was to create a community center where these kids that age out could educate themselves and could work together to re-enter society. We spent two days thinking about that, identifying what all the steps were to get to that future state. And now he is the community man manager building that community center in New York. So it is possible. And even if you don't believe these stories, the Apollo program started exactly the same. I don't know if it's a true story, but a myth or a legend. When the Apollo program started, they started with the welcoming home party of the astronauts and they started reasoning their way back from that position. How did the astronauts get here? Where did we pick them up from? 
How did they get to that landing place? How did they re-enter Earth? All the way back so that they were able to put that man on the moon and bring him back home safely. So if you feel uncertain about today, the world that you're living in today, that's all right. But just don't be too afraid of what's going to happen. Because I don't see the future as losing what we've once had. I see the future unfolding as taking one step at a time to get where we want to be. So if you leave this room after Robin's talk and after we've had that 3D presentation, ask each other that question. You've all created that image just a couple of minutes ago in your minds. Ask each other that question. What do you want in the future? And ask each other, how are you going to put your man on your moon and bring him back home safely? Thank you.